What is up, health hackers, neutronauts, transhumanists, and rewilders? My name's Christian Bates, and this is Longevity Power. I just give you four terms, four terms that I'm going to describe for you as briefly as I can today. Uh, four terms, concepts, that's a lot for one video, but I will be brief, and I think that these four terms go together really well. These are ideas that are going to help you go from like, I'm okay, I eat good, my health's like, fine, to I'm getting amazing results in my vitality, I'm having measurable results today and in the long term. That's what we're about at Longevity Power. Like, we don't want to just like mess around and wing it. Like, we want to like go full fledged. And man, one of those terms that I'm about to talk about right now, are you ready? It's called health hacking or biohacking. I consider myself a biohacker because I biohack. So, biohacking is all about low input, large output. Typically, when you do something healthy and want to get a result, it's going to be like medium to large input and medium to low output, and that's okay. For example, meditating for 10 years is going to give you some amazing brain functioning. Your brain waves are going to be pretty rocking if you're diligent about that for 10 years, hopefully, hopefully. Uh, however, what if you could get there in 10 minutes? Well, you can. There are frequency devices that you stick onto your forehead that can actually affect dramatically your brain brain waves and you could actually get to a state very quickly or many different types of states uh, without having a decade of work or even better you could meditate for a decade using these devices then you get even better results than you would have without them now another biohack for brain functioning could be this guy this is a uh, reishi that I just picked here in the main woods it's a hot human day, and there was a hemlock log that had a whole bunch of suge, Ganoderma suge, which is a type of reishi that really likes to grow on hemlock uh, rather than hardwoods. The typical reishi from Chinese herbalism is uh, Ganoderma lucidum, which typically likes to grow on hardwoods. Anyways, this is a powerful mushroom for nerve tranquility. It is very uplifting, it deeply revitalizing. And I have found that when I take a strong reishi extract in about 10 or 20 minutes, I will feel like I just meditated for a while. So it is considered a biohack. It is also considered a borderline nootropic. Nootropic is the second term we're gonna talk about today. I called you a neutronaut, so a nootropic user. And this is, it depends on how you conclude from the science whether it's a true nootropic or not. A nootropic is something that will substantially boost your brain functioning, your cognition, your intelligence, especially your flow intelligence, your memory. This is like the coolest concept because it empowers us to not just wing it with our brain. Typically, as most people age, their brain starts to dwindle and it has like say a buildup of toxins like aluminum and a lack of certain nutrients like choline. And that can lead to a lot of degenerative uh, diseases of the mind. And we don't want to go down that road. We want to boost our brain as much as we can every day. Now, typically, the idea is that once you hit 25, your brain is done developing. However, for those of us who are past the age of 25, we can still improve our brain. We can take nootropics. Now, there are all kinds of nootropics out there. Some are considered short-term. For example, caffeine. Caffeine is considered a short-term nootropic. So if you love your coffee... You are definitely doing entropic, but it doesn't really last. Like once the caffeine's out of your system after a few hours, you don't really keep the results. So I want to talk about more of the tonic nootropics, the nootropics that do give you initial results, you know, for the few hours after you take them, but also have a cumulative effect. So you take them every day or most days, and over the weeks, the months, you will notice a difference, and then you won't be dependent on them. You can take a break from them, and you'll feel, feel just as nourished. So there's two top nootropics that you'll find. Uh, one is a good choline source. Your brain has this substance called acetylcholine and it needs plenty of it, not too much, and it needs a good uh, flow of it. It needs to be in the right balance and, and the right um, kind of cascade and how it changes into other compounds and turns on uh, compounds within your receptors. So uh, the most powerful source of choline out these days is called alpha-GPC. Uh, you could also take 
uh, a lighter source of choline if you like egg yolks. Inside that egg yolk is lecithin and different types of cholines. Not quite as potent as alpha GPC, but it could still get the job done, possibly. The other major uh, category of nootropics are the racetams. These are derivatives of GABA. Now, if you just took straight up GABA, it's not going to have that much of an effect. But if you take different derivatives of GABA, such as pyracetam and the other different types of racetams, and you stack that with uh, a, an acetylcholine uh, source, then you have a really great winning combination, and you will feel. I mean, this stuff is like really potent. If you take a good amount, um, and you don't want to take a huge amount right away, you need to kind of work up slowly with this, uh, you will definitely have some noticeable results. All right, moving on to transhumanism. Transhumanism is the idea that we can transcend the typical human conditions. These are the conditions of suffering, aging, and dying. And I really love the idea. I actually, over the years, have become a, a self-proclaimed transhumanist just because I like the idea of not dying and like all our ancestors did. In fact, I love how healthy and robust most of our ancestors were, but we don't have much evidence that many of them lived very long. Like, they might have been really robust up until the age of, like, 40, and then suddenly they didn't live much, you know, much past that. And that's, that's a little bit sad, although that is much of the reason why we are each here today. But there is no reason to continue that tradition. Now it's time to be vital at any age you want to be. And transhumanism is huge. Like, there is no one type of transhumanist. A lot of transhumanists are more into, like, technology everything. Like, so much so that they don't even really care about, health, like, biological health. They're like, just skip the biological health and let's all become cyborgs and upload our consciousness to a computer. Well, that's cool. I do respect that, and I do think that we should pursue that and develop that tech, those technologies as much as possible. However, I don't want to rely on it. Plus, at this point, even if you... And I love my body, too. Like, I want to keep my body. But let's say um, my entire body, except for my brain, became cybernetic. Well, there's still the brain. So you have your consciousness kind of localized in your brain, kind of, definitely, it seems, according to science. Uh, how are you going to replace your brain? Well, the idea is you would take your brain and upload it into a computer or onto the Internet. And let's say we develop that ability to actually map out our consciousness. But at this point, we don't think that it'll actually work. I, I don't. Some people are hopeful. Maybe it will, but that's got to be really far in the future just according to how it seems. So let's say you mapped your consciousness, you copied it into a computer, your body and brain then died, and then you have this consciousness in the computer. Well, that might not be you. That might not be your consciousness or your awareness. It might be an artificial intelligence copy of you that's acting like you. Meanwhile, you are still doing what most uh, souls do when they die, and we don't actually know what that is. I really love technology that's not so invasive, but is actually more of a natural-based technology uh, in order to, uh, say, reverse aging and live forever. So transhumanists uh, that are more into that uh, could be considered Dr. Arbor de Grey and the Sense Foundation. He has figured out that there's like these seven main causes of aging. And they're basically damage and buildup of garbage in your cells and in your DNA and in your extracellular fluid. And if you were to address all seven of those causes of aging, you would stop and reverse aging. Uh, I'm all about that. Let's continue that. Now, he's into a little bit more of a medical intervention, like using more like genetics. And it's just a little bit disempowering to have to like wait for that and have to go to a clinic to do that stuff. I really want to be able to do everything at home or wherever I am. I feel like I'm more of a rewilding transhumanist. So that's the fourth term, rewilding. Rewilding is the concept like we are humans that have been doing some weird stuff for the last 10,000 years, and we may have changed ourselves from our ancestors, most of our ancestors who lived hundreds of thousands of years as being humans. So with the uh, advent of more and more agriculture and more and more technology and more and more clothes and more and more shoes and more and more just aberrant behaviors, we may have changed ourselves to the point of being less adapted to the wild, less, less virile, and just less healthy. How much did we change ourselves? That's a good question. You can't really say for sure, because we're all unique and we all have different ancestry. 
I'm going to guess that I'm pretty changed to the point of maybe even being a different subspecies. So I am borrowing some lingo from some of my favorite authors out there. Uh, I just borrowed some lingo from Daniel Vitalis, and I love his work. So I'm just saying that so you don't think I'm being too hipster or, or copying. <laughs> um, but these are really cool terms that once you kind of get into them, I'm kind of like planting a seed right into you, and I want you to just go all out and add in what works for you. Rewilding is typically the concept reserved for like a place like, let's say this whole forest got damaged because of humans, so we domesticated. So domestication is like the opposite of wild. Domesticated this place, and so it was no longer self-sustaining as a wild ecosystem. Well, we could come and make it all wild again, so it's self-sustaining. Well, how do we do that to ourselves? How do we become more robust like our ancestors and not need, like, all this shelter and clothing and soft stuff, uh, but be able to, like, handle ice-cold, frigid temperatures uh, which is going to boost our circulation and and just boost our vitality and help us achieve other health goals. No matter how much we want to, you know, some of us are not. I'm I like camping. It's not I'm not a huge camper kind of a person. Although I probably will become more of one. So let's say you don't like camping and like get me away from those bugs. Well, there are hacks for that, and there are rewilding strategies for that and maybe that's part of your transhumanist approach and maybe you take some nootropics when you're camping and then you just feel like super smart about it all right those are four concepts take them and play with them my name's christian bates i always appreciate comments in the comment section below let me know what kind of biohacking and nootropics and other habits that you are doing and like, let me know your, your top one that you really are getting some good results with. Also, give us a nice big like and subscribe, and I will see you very soon.